Shalom, shalom, family. This is Yehuda from Yaz Assembly, and today we're continuing to learn about the Messiah. Today we're going over Matthew 20. So this is one that gives you more information about the kingdom of heaven. Um, the Messiah also prophesies. This is about his death, burial, and resurrection. And this also lets you know your, how the Most High measures your rank in the kingdom of heaven. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, please subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, like, and share our content. For the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is in the household, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So he went, him being the householder, he went and he found laborers and they all agreed to work for a penny a day. And then he saw some people that weren't doing anything, anything and said unto me, go you also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. So he found some more people. And he again, and again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand you here idle, here all the day idle? So why are you standing here not doing nothing? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go you also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. So he's hiring all these people. All these people. Now, remember, he's, he's letting us know stuff about the kingdom right now. So, when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. So, why wouldn't he start at the first? Because <laughs> it's a mystery in the kingdom. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. So the people that came last, they received the full amount, the full penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These that these last have wrought but one hour, and now has made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Did not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that is thine and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is not I evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few are chosen. So the first ones are the call, and many there's so many people that are called, it's not even funny. But those that are chosen, those that end up becoming the cream of the crop, those are the ones that are going to get the same reward, or sometimes it's actually even greater. And the mystery in Matthew 20 is because, remember, the Messiah said that I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. At this point in time, the southern kingdom of Judah, or the quote-unquote Jews, are only dealt with themselves. They did not deal with the other nations and they did not deal with the northern tribes. So this was actually foreshadowing what the Messiah's ministry was going to branch out into. Um, because the kingdom of heaven is without observation and the Most High, he will have mercy on whom he will have mercy on. So looking at it from that lens, that's how we can understand like, okay, okay. Because he already had a covenant of people. So even though they were quote unquote allegedly cut off, they had to come back to it or the most high would be alive. Because he says in Psalms 89 that he won't lie to David and his covenant he will not uh, break or alter the things come out of his mouth. He says the same thing in Joshua. So again, this was foreshadowing um, the, the prodigal sons coming back or the northern kingdom coming back. And Jesus going up to Jerusalem took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, 
and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. So he's letting them know what's going to happen. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. So in the kingdom of heaven, give them preeminence. But Jesus answered and said, You not, know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? What do you think? Are they? They say unto him, We are able, because it, it is good for us to be like our master. We won't be greater than him, but we can be like him. So yes, we can drink of the cup and be baptized with the baptism. And he saith unto them, You shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left, is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. So that's still in the Father's power. In the Father's power. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. So again, this part is about learning what your rank or stature is going to be in the kingdom and how you can get greater ranks. Because we know that keeping the commandments and being obedient, teaching men to do so, will make you great in the kingdom. So that increases your rank. But also, but Jesus said unto him and said, but, but Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Talking about the nations. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister or a servant. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant or minister. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. That's what, that was his purpose. Servants, so if you want to be great in the kingdom, uh, be obedient, keep the commandments, and teach men to do so, and be a servant to those that lay co labor among you. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. So these blind men was like, Nah, I know you've unlocked the kingdom of heaven. You have the ultimate all, which is the force of the power of God flowing through you. You have the Godhead, and you can heal us. So we're not going to just let you just walk away when you got my blessing. If you're healing in this season, don't do it without me, like the song says. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will you that I should do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, thou art that our eyes may be open. So they're like, hey, you going to ask me? Uh, what I need, yeah, we want our eyes open so we can see, so we can be healed. Asking you shall receive. This is the law of manifestation because we got to remember um, the, mo the Most High through His beloved Son is the master of manifestations of healing, of power. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed Him. So we got to remember that with the Most High, all things are possible. To be great in the kingdom, be obedient, keep the commandments, and become a servant to your co-laborers. All things, again, are possible to those who believe. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for continuing to teach us about your, your beloved Son in whom you are well pleased, our Messiah. We ask for you to forgive us of our sins and the sins of our ancestors. We ask for you to send your healing now and your prosperity now. We thank you for being ready to save and ready to forgive. We thank you for having an angels encamped around about us to protect us and keep us from hurt, harm, and danger, Father. Thank you, Father, for being Yahweh or for being the God or the Lord that provides for us, Father. All these things we do ask and pray in the name of your beloved Son, Amen. So again, today we're continuing to learn about the Messiah 
where we're continuing to learn about the kingdom of heaven and the law of manifestation. I am Yehuda. This is Yah's Assembly. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like and share our content. And until next time, peace family. Whoa.